we, we had a very underfunded, understaffed little project going there. It was just myself and the uh, three, four, five staff or printmakers, as you would say. So I, although I did travel, both in summer and winter, out to the camps, it was uh, really relying on people who had come in to trade. We would make sure that we'd sent back to the camp paper and pencils. And then they would bring those in on their own volition. It wasn't until in 64 when I, but then again, that had no real bearing on Dorset. 64, I was awarded a council council grant and traveled around North Baffin. And that was quite a trip. But back in Dorset, uh, really the motivation came from the people themselves. One, because I think they're interested. They're intrigued to tell you about what was happening and who they were. And so that, that, that worked very well. Just word, word of mouth. And among those drawings were um, a surprising variety of styles and subject matter. And Dorset, um, unlike again the, the drawings I collected years later in North Bath, and there were a lot of the drawings were motifs which lent themselves let lent themselves to creating a graphic. Whereas uh, other drawings were more narrative and very detailed. And of course, we had very limited, in those early years, very limited um, printing possibilities or potential. We're just working with stone and with stencil. It wasn't until um, back in the late 60s, I guess, early 70s, that we'd introduced. Well, we had to do some early 60s engraving in copper. And then I came down in the early 70s and with Ab Isaacs, we uh, visited Charlie Pactor and bought his old lithography lith press and his type and the Vandercook proofing press. And the whole operation started to expand in Dorset. 